Hi, this is George Cow, and welcome back to another Kindred Spirit Conversation. Um, I'm here with Val Nelson. And Hi. Val, you and I have known each other going back at least till 2012, maybe earlier than that. Well, I've known of you since, pro I think we both started our businesses around the same time, and I, I saw you early on. Yeah, yeah. You probably didn't know me until, you know, I started connecting yeah. with you a few years later. Yeah, and um, I've... So I'm glad we've kept in touch over the years because we've experimented on a few little projects together. And yeah. uh, now we are, um, you know, you and I are both seven years into our coaching business. And so one of the, one of the, wanted to talk about a couple things. One is running groups. Um, so should we actually start with that? Let's yeah. Start. Well, should we say like what the two topics we want to talk okay. about? Or yeah. should we just see what happens? And then second one is, I just want to ask you kind of what are some of the, the big uh, aha moments or lessons or things you've learned along the way that you think might be helpful for others? Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm going to turn that around and ha I want you to have the same yeah. okay. question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a coach. I ask questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, which one would you like to start with? Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about like what our... Another way you put it, I think, was like important lessons we've gained from, yes. from being in business. Okay. I, I was just actually in my, one of my mastermind groups yesterday that I was leading. Um, some people were away on vacation, so it was smaller than usual. And I, they ended up asking me a lot more questions about my own business journey. And they were like, man, we should do this more. We don't even know like, how you started. And we need this information. And yeah. I think it's just so valuable that we we share like, what was it like when we got started, yeah. you know, cause That's it just looks great. all shiny sometimes to other people and it's not on the inside, but yeah. sure wasn't in the beginning. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So, that's a really good idea. So, um, do you want to start with anything that that's on your mind about this? Well, I'll, I'll say two things that, mm -hmm. um, cause you, you gave me the question before, so I already thought of two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. two like important lessons. Um, and one is that I am super resourceful. I really have gotten in my bones how I can re trust myself. Yeah. So even if I want to, you know, I, I, I used to think I was very risk averse, but here I am running a business and loving that whole thing. And people think, oh man, you're a risk taker. But I'm like, well, I don't believe in labels like risk taker and risk averse. Yeah. I, I think that sometimes we can, rise to that and sometimes we can't in different situations yeah. everybody's got those areas um but i've learned to really trust myself and that's what helps me quote be a risk taker <laughs> mm. because i can go you know what i always land on my feet i can look back and see that that is a true thing in my life so maybe it won't always be the case but those odds are good for me and, and to continue to trust in that is probably part of what helps me continue to do that. It's, it's that trust. So, so knowing that and having that in my bones is really helpful for me to go forward. So is that something you think others can learn? I mean, how oh, did, good question. So, yeah, I mean, of course, there are certain things that happen in your life that maybe you could say, start with that. Like what, what happened in your life or what did you have to do to learn that, to really viscerally learn that you can trust yourself? That you, can tr that you can trust yourself to land on your feet, like you said, to God. be okay. Yeah, be what a run. great question. I don't, you know, it's hard to answer something that's been a lifetime and coming, yes. you know. Yes. But um, I think it's through, uh, I bet everyone can learn it, yes. Because mm -hmm. if you're alive, you have been landing on your feet. <laughs> <And so, laughs> right? Really good point, yes. Um, I mean, if uh, let's let's re refer. if you're alive and you're watching this, <laughs> you're probably <laughs> right. being okay. Probably, yeah. And even I mean, even people who are maybe homeless right now, mm. they're probably on their feet in this in a certain way, right? Mm. So so much has to do with perspective. And so for me, it's about bringing it to consciousness. So I've done all, a lot of work of mm. you know between therapy and coaching and um, all different types of healing modalities and things to really in spiritual things, mindfulness, meditation. And I just, I think all those things help me have helped me land in who I am and to trust that and to be able to look back and name things and to take 
take on those, take it on as something I can believe in. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I like that you said, go look back and name things because I think that's what all of us can do is yes. to yes. do a bit of an inventory of our life's journey when we kept, you know, we got into a difficult situation, but look, it resolved itself or we, we were able, we had the resources, the inner resources, yeah. or the outer resources came to us to be able to resolve yeah. that. Right. Um, and, and you obviously have that. You're someone that I, I sense feels like yeah. you can trust that inner resourcefulness. Mm. Would yeah. you say that? Yeah, I, um, I, I do have to say that it hasn't always been this way, even in the last seven years. Oh, of course. Of course, of course. <laughs> Every day is different. As a business owner, <laughs> I have had periods of, of fear. Um, but I, you know, like for example, and I think probably all of us can relate to this. Like if a, if a client completes uh, and doesn't renew or if a launch campaign really doesn't, and I'll tell you, I've had right. more failures than most of my clients. Because you're a risk taker. That's <laughs> why you try things. Yeah, I, I launch and that's what I really, one of the lessons I, I would say I've learned is that um, it's almost like you, you never know how the launch is going to go. You can make, make guesses, but I usually am surprised. I'm usually surprised. I, funny thing is like having been a marketer for all these years, and seen a lot of launches. And when I say launch, I mean anybody who is basically reaching out about, oh, I can take clients now and right. I might have room in my programs or whatever. So that's a launch, right? Um, I'm usually surprised what either nobody responds <laughs> you know, like, or very few people sign up or I'm surprised that oh, I'm, just, I'm just going along and doing my thing and suddenly people are, are contacting me wanting to work with me. Yeah. And so I've, what I've observed from that is I like to call it being a marketing agnostic. Mm. Uh -huh. I get, I think I get you. Yeah. This is agnostic. Like I, like I, I would say in the spiritual realm, I'm, I'm like far from being an agnostic. Like, <laughs> right. But when it comes to business and marketing, I'm an agnostic. Like I don't know. I just want to put it out there and kind of see what happens, how the market responds. I feel like the, the you know, it's like, it's like you, you, you let go and let God, right? Is that, yeah. oh, like in, that. in business and marketing, my lesson has been to let go and let the market tell, oh. tell me. So that's one of your big lessons. That's one of my big lessons. Let go and let God. God yeah. speaks to us through the market in our business. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Saying, well, does this, is this marketable? Well, let them tell me. <laughs> right. Yeah. I you love know. it. And, and so, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think I, and I bet you do too, I think I bring a, a combination of, um, intuition to what what to put out there yes and so my energy something in me says this might work or at least it's worth trying and because whatever i learn whether it doesn't work or not is going to be something i need mm -hmm. and so it works <laughs> in that mm -hmm. sense see, see Plus, say more about that what do you mean something you well, need? even if it doesn't it's some information i need to know if something in me is saying i need to put this out there <sighs> then I need to put it out there. Okay. And if it, doesn't, if it doesn't work for someone else, then I've learned something that I needed. Does that mm. make sense? Yes. So therefore it's a success, even if I didn't make money at it, right? Right. But, but it has to start there. It has to start with my intuition, my heart, whatever you call it, soul, alignment, mm. spirit. Um, it has to start there. And so you're not, you're, what you're saying, is not just throwing anything out there. I imagine you're you something is telling yes. you this might work. And so then the combination of this and how other people react. It, yes, that combination is what we're tr always trying. So how do you, is do you want to share your process of how you get aligned to <laughs> discover that aha idea, or is it something that, or do you have any tips for? For others on this? Well, 
Yeah, yeah, good, good question. I, and I'm, again, I'm dying to hear your answer to that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had this thing happen recently where, you know, it's summer and um, there was just for, and also just like my own head was kind of in other places probably. So all of a sudden there was this lull in my business and I started to get into this clinch place about, oh my God, I'm not going to make enough money and I'm starting to dip into savings and I don't like that and there's not a lot of savings. So it's just, it was a tense, I, start, I could feel myself tensing up mm. even though I had this thought of like, I'm always resourceful. I always land yeah. on my feet. It's just a lull. It's just summer. This Remember, Val, this happened last June. This right. is normal. <laughs> Like it's, it's so different, fine. though, when you're experiencing <laughs> when you're it. you're in it. <laughs> right. it's, a, it's an opportunity to freak out or not freak out. <laughs> so I was like, okay, working that muscle again. And, yes. and so part of me wanted to go, okay, how can I go get some clients? How can I go make some money? You know, th those were some of the initial questions that came up. Yes. And I heard someone say, and actually in the Wisdom Printers group, someone said, what if you switch the question to how can I be of more service? That was the opening post that someone did and I decided to really take that to heart and go that does create a shift wow. it creates a shift of coming from the heart instead of coming from the pure money focus yes. it says how can I be of more service mm. and that might happen to make money and who cares almost like once I got into that place it was the, just the right place <laughs> mm. and it does lead to more abundance of whatever sort you know yeah. and, and so what I, I kept asking myself that question for a few days and one morning right as I, I my best intuitive moments happen right when I'm waking up mm. and I might even like just ask a question how can I be of more service to you know my people what do they need and the question kept getting fine-tuned and it turned into what do my people need that I can easily help with in a very short amount of time and a number of things had happened over the last couple of days that told me oh my people tend to struggle a lot with pricing and packaging their heart-centered services and and I am good at helping with that in a short amount of space yeah and so rather than just offering a bunch of one-off sessions, I was like, I can do that in a workshop where you come and you get it done. Yes. A virtual. I mean, this is what poured out as I woke up. Wow. The, the topic, the format, and even the price wow. came to me from another plane. <laughs> and I was like, really? That price? Like, no, let me I ask know. you this. Me <laughs> but I went with it. Do you feel like you did any preparation to allow that? those magical ideas to come to you so in other words did you journal about it the night before you went to you know the night before or ask the question i think i was i think i was just carrying the question like an wow. inquiry just kept carrying it and then it sort of naturally rolled off that morning like yes because okay. i had been carrying you know how, how do and you because i purposely every morning i do ask like you know show me oh. I'm, I'm literally am trying to connect with soul guidance on a much more regular basis lately i mean i, I do meditate every morning but this is a specific asking kind mm -hmm. of thing like saying i'm open yes. i'm open to guidance yes and sometimes it it all just shows up sometimes it doesn't and i still have to make decisions but it's so nice when it comes like that <laughs> the funniest part of that to me was the price <laughs> I'm like, really, you're going to tell me the exact price? <laughs> and I was even against it. And I kept trying to say, no, I want to charge more for this. And, yeah. You know, because I was in this money place. And when I finally let go, I was just like, no, I really want to offer it for that lower than I think price because it's going to somehow lead to something. It's going to help me help more people that need it at that price. Or it's going to help me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just knew I needed to trust it. And yeah. that's what's happening. Wow. And did you do the workshop already? No, it's coming up. I'm just starting. I'm, that's what I was doing today, but I still need to finish writing up the page for it for people to register and explain it. But I've already floated it, and I already have people saying, put me on the list. I've, yeah. I've been telling people about it. That was the other signal. So I had a signal from me, mm. and then I mentioned it to three or four people, and they all leaned in and went, oh, my God, sign me up. Yeah. So it's almost like I just have to make the registration page okay. Yes. <laughs> you know? like, Two signs, internal, external, go. And uh, it's a virtual workshop? Yep, so people can be anywhere. Mm. 
And so I'll be sure to put the link in the notes. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, yeah I got to get sure. that done. So you can't post this until it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> when, when are you? That'll make me get it ready. Sometime when, when are you going to be ready? This week is the plan. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of posting it tomorrow. Oh, shoot. Give me no, some. No, it's okay. I could, I could post it next week. I'll, I'll post it. Uh, I could post. When is the workshop? When is the start date? August 18th. So August it's 18th. very so I, I can, I can. The next window is I'll probably post it um, uh, the week of August 8th, if that's not too late. Oh. Okay. Let me just use this as incentive to get it to you okay. tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. See another sign. Get that yes, another there. sign. <laughs> really, I, I, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the lessons I've learned along the way also is that, well, I've mentioned this a little bit, but I do believe that God, um, our higher self sp speaks to our business through other people. Yes. Um, yes. Not just through our own ideas, which you've already mentioned, the, the matching of the internal and the external. And I feel like a lot of people uh, especially visionaries, idealists, heart-centered people like the folks you and I work with, yeah, can be too um, too much emphasizing, perhaps the internal guidance, uh -huh. and, and not realize, not balancing enough with external uh, yes. guidance. Um, and and when I say external guidance, I don't mean like a business coach tells you to do this or a program gives you this formula. No, no, I'm right. talking about observing and listening for yeah. oh so and so told me this today how does yeah. that how, how how does what kind of signal is this telling me about right how does it the market yeah. that i should be going into or how i should shape my offerings mm -hmm. or, or who is right for my offerings yeah there's these couple of questions right? yeah and and so many times we try to do that from our heads right you know, and, yeah right so to me, my heart is the instrument for that. Like, do I feel resonance? Like literally feel it almost like when a song is in tune, there's a visceral sense in our body, right? Yes. When you hear music, if it's off, like no. But if it's on, you, you feel it yes. in your body. And so I, it's kind of like that. It's, it's happening here and it's happening out there. It's that connection. I'm all about the blend. Yeah. <laughs> I think you are too. I think yes. that's why we're kindred spirits. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. Um, so I want to ask you this about, uh, workshop and maybe we can go into talking about groups is yeah. what have you learned, uh, over the, the years about running a good workshop Oh, or anything, anything you want to share? I mean, I know a lot of time to like go through step by step, but just any, any like aha moment or like, Oh, a lot of people do this, uh, in a way that's not as effective or. Yeah. I would say, well, you know, my specialty is heart-centered introvert, um, introverted soulpreneurs, I call them, S-O-U-L-preneurs. And so it's really important to me that any workshop I lead is going to be introvert-friendly, which is, I would say most workshops are probably not. So oh. that's one thing I've learned is... Okay, so how do I create a space where introverts are not going to bristle? Because uh, um, like a group that's too large, a lot of introverts won't want to go to. Or if one person's dominating the conversation, they probably won't like it. If there's not time to think, mm. that doesn't feel right. So most meetings, because our right. world is so extrovert, dom extrovert dominant, our Western right. culture is, yeah. Um, most meetings are really kind of fast paced and you, and you, you kind of have to interrupt in order to get a word in. There's not time to think. Right. And that's a very extrovert. That's a really com comfortable place for an extrovert. Right. But it's really uncomfortable and d jarring for an introvert in the way that we like to think right. because we prefer to think first. So I do things in a workshop where, okay, let's stop and write down and then we'll have a chance to share. Mm. So just little things like that can go a long way for making it something that people feel calm instead of rattled through the process and can actually get some thoughts done. Yeah. Get really things like done. And this workshop that I'm about to lead, I'll definitely bring in some, you know, group guidelines for allowing room for silence and stuff and like it's that. And just to clarify, it's virtual. It is, workshop. yes. So people can attend from anywhere in the world. It's going to be uh, you right they can access the internet yeah yeah and so yeah but this same thing would be true if i did an in-person but this one i'm about to do um i forgot what i was going to say 
you were talking about oh, oh I remember so the, the format of this particular workshop is going to be a get it done workshop so we're going to meet in the morning yes or whatever morning <laughs> the first yeah. meeting of, <laughs> I'm not sure where they're going to be in the world yeah. the, the morning for me and you know with some presentation and Q&A and introductions and then they're going to have a chunk of time to go off and do some work mm on their own and and then come back and they'll have another opportunity in small groups with me to um to get some questions or you know feedback on specific things they're working on and then they can go off and do some work on their own again and then we all come together to wrap up at the end mm -hmm. so there's ample time for working with the content on your own interesting so so it's it's three meetings mm -hmm. And then the middle and then the end and then yeah. the, the two periods in the middle are self-working times yes and this came the reason that format came to me so easily is because i attended a workshop like that okay. a few years ago that i really liked that format and i, I just thought how cool you know that's so cool i'm going to do that one day i, I may just, borrow that yeah yeah because i borrowed it from stephanie pollock and i don't know Maybe it was hers, and maybe she got it from someone else. Maybe it's a standard thing. There's probably nothing new under the sun. No. <laughs> probably, you know, Adam and Eve probably used that. <laughs> they probably did that workshop. <laughs> That's brilliant. <Okay. laughs> Funny. So, yeah, what about you? What, what works for you when you lead something? Um, what have you learned? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So, what I, I feel like the one thing I really excel at when I'm leading a group is um, eliciting, eliciting a community feeling yes. even in a single meeting. Yes, yes, and yes. And so I think I'm just really, and maybe it comes from like years of um, solopreneurship and like really wanting people to say something, like give me some feedback, you know? <laughs> right. And so I think from that, I've just, I've, <laughs> And I just really like, all right, you know, let's, so from the very beginning of, of a, let's say webinar or a meeting, I do everything virtually now. So it's all virtual yeah. and people, great. people engage through the chat, you know, the, the typing chat. So I always tell people first to, all right, you know, I'd love to know where you are attending this from in the world. Oh, um, good. So opening. please, you know, type into the chat where you are in the major, your know, whatever major metropolitan area you are in the world so that we can kind of get a sense. Oh, you're from, you know, Chicago or you're from you know San Francisco or New York or South Africa or whatever you know and um, and then um, uh, when I um, when I remember to do this I, <laughs> I take a pause and I invite people to imagine everyone in the room virtually yes. and just like almost like close our eyes and imagine we're kind of with each other maybe even holding virtual hands and yeah um oh, i'm so glad you do that connecting yeah. hearts and i don't always do this because so i'm like reminding myself now like yes you're reminding me too yeah uh, it's like connect connect the hearts and feel how gr grateful it is how much gratitude that we have this opportunity to be together uh and to send a positive intention for this meeting and it's like it's one thing to do this on your own but it's one thing when you have a group energy and i really do believe and there's an energetic there's an energetic connection that's invisible to the human eye yes i think one day our scientific instruments will be subtle enough to be able to sense it yes but, um but I, I do you know believe it's there and so when we can have this energetic connection uh and then after that i may ask people to chat um what is your you know give one word intention for how you like this how you like this meeting to, to go so there's a lot of pause oh, nice. that come through, you know. So so that's like a nice way to kind of start. And one one lesson I learned years ago from a teacher is the teacher said, if you get your students to speak early on in the class, yes, they're more likely to speak throughout the class. Oh, that's a great lesson. Yeah. So so it's almost like you frame the very beginning with, oh, it's okay for me to to participate. Yes, and yes. So, and so I, I tell people, all right, for the rest of this, usually it's like a lecture I'm giving or a workshop or a webinar, right? So it's like for the rest of this webinar, I invite you to take notes directly in the chat if you would like to. Uh, even if it's just a few words of something I said that you want to remember or something, an idea that came to you that you want to offer as well or a question. 
feel free to just type it in a few words and press enter and mm -hmm. help other members some, some idea as well. So yeah, so that's kind of, I find that that's helpful. And uh, oh, one more thing I do that I, I think people love is when I, like I do this in my client group now, um, is when we have our monthly meeting uh, and I have people introduce themselves just with one minute quick intro. Um, I have everybody type into the chat what they heard that they most appreciated or what they what resonated most with them. Nice. From the introduction. Um, and, and any questions or confusions that they had that might want to be tweaked, the intro tweaked so that it can address that or something. And people love that, oh, wow, I feel validated that, wow, you know, yeah. it's resonating with people. And so, like, however we can validate one another. Yeah, that's great. You know, I wrote that down. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So that's. In my mastermind groups, which are small, five people, and, and mm -hmm. I might even go down to four because that's just wow. so powerful. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but I do things like what you're saying. Yes. But when it comes to a larger format, sometimes it, I have to think about like the, uh, the other way of helping people feel included if it's, you know, a lot of people, you know, so I, I try to have a go round if it's not too many or other ways of, of being seen, even if it's yes. a lot. Yes. Yeah. I like, I like these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Being seen. And I would say, however we can do to be validated, help each other be validated uh, by the group. It's common. I almost, re it almost reminds me of like, um, was it, Alcoholics Anonymous or one of the groups, you know. Right. Yes. Yeah, so all the 12 step love, programs. Right? Hi. Yeah. Hi, my name is Val. Hi, Val. <laughs> Hi, Val. Yeah, something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you mentioned mastermind and uh, I know you have a virtual mastermind that you're going to be starting soon. Yeah. Well, I have it running all the time. You have it running. And all I time. have open enrollment every six months. Oh, okay. So what does that mean? Open enrollment? Well, that means if there's, if there's spots open, okay. um, it's an opportunity for new people to join so that it, it has worked out pretty well that way. That way people know when they start that they're with people that it's easier for them to open up if they know these people are going to be with them for a while. Okay. And then, and then if there's new people entering, they all enter at the same time. And so that's just the format I'm using now. I, I don't good. think it's the only way to do it. So um, if so are people committing to six months or they, yeah. they are committing. Okay. So yeah. committed to six months together. And yeah. so let's say that a group of four goes through six months and then two of them decide they want to continue. Mm -hmm. But they so know, it's, they know it's open enrollment. So they know that it's going to be two, obviously two new people that they might not right. even know joining. Right. And that, that, that works. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing I do that I think helps uh, put people at ease is um, after the first meeting, it's a guarantee if they've paid, if, if after the first meeting they feel like, Oh, I just can't be part of this group. Something about it doesn't feel right. They can get their money back. Right. right. So, um, so, and that's true each time. So even if they've been around a while, but for some reason, the new, the new group isn't their thing. They, they still have that guarantee. Got it. So that way they feel, it's just one little thing that can put them at ease when, when they sign up again. Right. That's good. That's really good. Um, what do you, uh, so these, these are virtual masterminds. Is there any, any tip or lesson you want to share from running a virtual mastermind? Um, like what, what seems to be working well? I really like the format that we're using for the meet. I, I like, Oh gosh, there's, there's a lot of things because I've been doing it for a few years. So I've like, I, each time I do it, I kind of tweak a new thing like, Oh, that went really well. Let's do it. Turn up the dial on that or something. Ooh. So, yeah. So the, um, one thing and that I'm I, actually I, asking this, oh, because yeah. I'm, I'm just starting to run masterminds virtually. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. I'm doing everything virtually. So I'm just actually starting to run masterminds. Like, yeah. Like three, oh, I thought you'd been doing it a while. Maybe they were larger groups. They were always know. larger groups. And now for the first yeah. time, I'm running a small, I'm right now I have two oh, small, one small. That's the authentic. Small group, two and maybe three. But, um, but yeah, what, what is your, I'm figuring this out right now. So what, what, okay. what, what's worked for you? What's worked so for you? Here's what I am liking. Um, uh, meeting twice a month an hour and a half for those meetings. Yeah. 
I keep it to no more than five people. And I, like I said, maybe even four this next time. Mm. Um, everyone gets to talk each time mm. in a, you know, but there's also a topic that I bring each time. Mm. So, and on top of that, during the six month, this last one, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the next one. I'm going to decide before I launch it. Um, I've included two individual sessions. I'm thinking about including three in the next oh. season because I've seen how powerful the combination of individual and yeah. group sessions is. Yeah. And I, I just want them to have that. I want them to, and what I noticed when I didn't include it at all, and it was just the groups, the group meetings, they were shy. They meet, there was things that would get stuck. And I knew it, we could just release that in one individual session mm. and they would get shy about, investing in that because they thought they already invested all you know they spent all that money on coaching and so they were afraid to do this one little thing that could make a huge difference yeah. and so i'm like i'm just going to include it i'll add a little bit to the price and then they've already invested in the, and then the people who have tried it both ways are like i'm so glad you included it because wow. i would have i would not have scheduled it and i see the difference that it's making for me so I'm really glad I did that. I, I would recommend considering that. That's a good, that's a good tip. I just like include that. it. <laughs> yeah, just include it. Yeah. And then I also added in um, a website review because that's a talent of mine that I, I can look at a website and see like what's, you know, some of the blocks for it getting yeah. better results. And yeah. so I included that as one of the bonus items, you know, so just, and that's been fun for me to do. And that, it, that's another session because yeah. They send me, you know, what they're looking for, and then we go over it on, in a session. So they're really getting, right now, they're getting three sessions because mm -hmm. they get the two regular coaching yeah. sessions plus the website review. And what, uh, do you want to share anything about the format of, of the meetings goes? themselves? Yeah, yeah. So the opening, and I get everybody's buy-in on this. The opening of each meeting is a, like an opening mindfulness thing, kind of like what you said about yeah. that, imagine but I'm getting them to ground themselves and also to notice what they're bringing with them and mm -hmm. what they're longing for. Mm -hmm. And then I give them time to write down something to help mm -hmm. them arrive. And then there's a short go round for everyone to be heard right away. <laughs> Good. So it's very short, like a one minute go round of like, where are you at? What's going to help you arrive? Yeah. Um, something you've been waiting to tell us mm -hmm. Things like that. So I really like that format. Mm -hmm those two pieces really help set the tone. And, and that's part of what I, how I describe the group. Like this is going to be a place where you can finally come and breathe and yes. be with your people. So I start us off breathing. Yes. <laughs> and that's been a good thing. And mm. then, and then uh, the topic, like the other day it was about pricing and packaging and money issues around that. And so there mm. were, that ended up in a juicy discussion Sometimes that takes up the bulk of it, but I make sure everyone has a chance to be part of that discussion. Okay. But usually it's a topic and then a go round yeah. um, where they get to share like a celebration and a challenge around that topic and an opportunity to ask for feedback or help with something. It doesn't have to be on topic. If they're launching a workshop, say it's an opportunity to talk through like what's going on and right. Um, and to ask for referrals or, you know, so they're really there for each other in a community way. And then at the end, I do one more go round and ask them to sit, first write down yeah. yes. <laughs> and then say, um, what are you taking away from today or, or, or and or do you want to say an intention for the yeah. group, you know, intention going forward that you want the group to witness mm. your intention. And then I encourage them to make plans with each other so that they are really getting to know each other in a deep way and building community, That's not great. just in the group, but one-on-one -on -one as well. Yes. That makes a huge difference. I would definitely add that encouragement of like buddy connections. Right. Right. That's really and not just one person. If it was a large group, I would say pick one person that you stay with, but I have them mix it up. So they're getting to know everybody. Yes. So and no right. one's left out. Yes. Yes. That's really good. I like that. Wow. You've just given the blueprint for, uh, for <laughs> yeah, at least yeah. the way it's working for me and my yeah, style and, and my people. So maybe some people watching this will want to join yours to see how it's, how it's run from me. I hope so. Yeah. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll include the link 
Okay, yeah, that, yeah. that link is almost ready too. I'll get that ready tomorrow too. Okay, so there will be two links. You'll get <laughs> I'll include it. That's awesome. Yeah, the workshop might be a good way for people to get to know me, but they can also just hop on a phone call with me to get to know me and talk about the group. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so yeah. go after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like, I, I, it's not just anybody can join. I really want to help make sure it's a good match. So I like to get to know people and let them get to know me. That's okay. nice. That's yeah. great. So I'll, I'll share with you quickly what yeah. my format is right now. Good. Um, as a newbie. And, uh, I'm going to definitely be borrowing some elements from what you've said. Oh, cool. I'm happy to share more later if you want. Okay. Um, so I, it's right now it's very simple. Like I basically have my masterminds are either just two people or three people in a group, um, maximum of three, minimum of two. <laughs> They're simple. And if there's two people, then we meet only twice a month, uh -huh. uh, one hour each. And if there's three people, we meet three times a month one hour each. Um, and so on each meeting, uh, it's split into half an hour, half an hour. The first half hour is when, um, well, I should say the second half hour, we deep, deep dive, I guess, into one person's business. Okay. So one person each month. Yes. I mean, each person one, gets one once a month. Exactly. They get a deep dive. Okay. And Neat. then the first half, so that's the second half is half hour deep dive into one person. And then the first half is the other two people, let's say we have three people, then the other two people. So if we, if, if there was only a two person mastermind, then it would be 1545. Mm -hmm. minute, uh, 15 minutes, the, the other person checking in, but if there's two, three people, then it's half an hour, half an hour. And the, the first half hours, basically about 12, 15 minutes, each person share, um, what their, uh, any, any celebration, uh, any particular learning and any challenge that they're, facing right now and we could do a really quick kind of coaching and and what I'm what I'm learning what I'm trying to do better is I'm trying to um, particularly in the shorter check-in times uh, I'm trying to uh, to keep that person's sharing somewhat limited because I want the others to chime in with their feedback or their validation uh -huh. yeah. um, because my belief is that um, the, the, the network grows stronger. The mastermind is more, uh, feels more connected when um, each person is able to opinionate on the others. Yeah. Um, even if they're like my temptation, of course, I want to tell them what I think. <laughs> as, as the right. It's a, right. You know? But I feel like discipline. Right. As I feel like the others chiming in about each other's has more benefit for everyone because they're more, they feel more connected. And actually most of the time when I find that I shut up and let the others chime in, their ideas are usually better than mine. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's a really good idea. You know? Yeah. And so um, that's the amazing thing about groups. So much yeah. more can happen than, yes. than just one-on-one. -on -one. It's yes. pretty it's so cool. This is really cool. Yeah. So, uh, but but I really like how you how you start and how you end it, and so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna test that out. Oh yeah, I think the start and ending is really important. Yeah, people don't know what they just learned unless they stop and think about it sometimes yes. and write it down and name it. And it's amazing what I hear in that that closing circle of yes. what are you taking away from today? It's uh, often not at all what I expected, but it's powerful and mm -hmm. it's helpful for me to see what. They Wow. I do that in my individual sessions too. I always end with, what are you taking away from today? Oh, I like that. And it's really good information for me and good for them to learn it from themselves. Right. It lands. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, so I want to share with you a, a new kind of thing I'm launching and I want to oh, get yeah. the feed, quick feedback on it. Love it. So um, I, I'm creating this Facebook group. It's a, it's a private Facebook group. So basically I have, I guess I have three services. I have the one-to-one -one coaching and yeah. I have the mastermind. And then this third, third one is a bit larger and I wasn't sure how large it was going to be, but I just had this vision yesterday um, that it's this third group is just going to be um, a, a secret Facebook group where I, I show up, basically five times a week, five days a week to provide support, encouragement, and provide some accountability, setting intentions and things like that. Um, and we meet once a month on a group call 
Uh, it's actually already running, but I'm kind of relaunching it. Okay. And I'm going to limit it to just 24 people. Oh. And it's just yeah. going to be 100, 125 a month. Uh huh. 24 people only. And I'm going to, I'm going to require that the people be active and active will be figured out over time. What that means yes. thinking like active it. is probably they post their updates at least twice a month where they're talking about their you know, celebrations, learning and challenge. Um, and twice a month they post that update and they also at the same time comment on three others updates. Uh, I like that. So, so then that's one part of being active. The second part of being active is to be having a virtual coffee with every person in the group over the course of a year. So uh-huh. Right. Oh, two a month. Yeah, yeah. Just two a month. That's it. And maybe just half an hour, you know, and that way um, nice. they get to know. So like, I want to, I want to create a, a group where people feel truly safe. Uh, it's a values based group. So we have high, high sense of what business and marketing can be. And uh, they trust each other. They, they really share and they really benefit from the support, the camaraderie, the encouragement and the mm. resources shared there. And my vision is that it's just going to be 24 people so that it all, inevitably there's going to be more people who want to join. And I'm going to encourage someone in the group to start an, off, an offshoot of their own. And then huh. obviously they can monetize it too. So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be connect. I'm not going to be taking a cut from that. I'm just, they're going to start their own group. They can model off what I'm doing and I'll refer new people to them. And so my, my vision, my dream is that, <laughs> It'll just be multiplying and there, there can be as many groups as are needed in the world to support entrepreneurs. I love the idea. So, th- yeah, I thought of something like that once before. And I think because not all my clients are coaches. So it's right. Yeah. So it's that little, sort of multiplying thing. It's not always what right. they want to be doing. You know, yes, like exactly. what, what's coming out of us is not necessarily what they want to do. Yes but still they would have the model and they would be spreading the love in whatever way. Right? Well, if you, en- if you enroll at least one coach in there, then maybe that <laughs> that could be the, uh, sort of the next generation. <laughs> right. But even if that didn't happen, mm-hmm. those people are going to be going out in the world in, in a better way because of the connections they would have. You know what I mean? Whatever that is, there's the ripple effect on some level. Right. Right. Of course. Or you wouldn't yes. be doing it. <laughs> but so, so what was your, question you said well, I mean, any feedback you have on 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 that or how how might you well i think my first question was are there going to be 24 people on the monthly call like is it one meeting for everybody so i'm thinking about um yes it's one meeting for everyone uh but now you've actually inspired me to do a possible second monthly call where maybe i'm thinking why not do the workshop type format that you're talking about? Oh, like, get it done. Like, yes. Like a get it done day, you know, For like co-working. Do, yeah. yeah, something like that. So that's a, that's a cool idea. Um, yeah, yeah. That's so, part of why I'm trying on this get it done workshop idea. Cause I'm thinking about starting a community where this, that might be one of the things great every other month or something. Yeah. A get it done thing. Yes. Yes. I just have to find out first if I like it. Yes. That's yeah. why I'm keeping the price low. Cause it's an experiment. Yeah. Well, I, I look forward to looking at it when the link's available. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep talking about this thing. Cause I, and I, I'll be curious to see what you discover. Cause I keep wanting to do a community like that. And yes. I just, I keep going, well, this, well, maybe that, and maybe it's just not time for me to do it. Cause my head keeps spinning yeah. on the numbers and the price and what's included. Right. Yes. There's so many parts to it. Oh, I, I've, I, I'm sure I'll learn a lot. I mean, we should probably do a, do a, a reprise in maybe six months so that yes. we can share. Oh, that'd be share great. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Let's yeah, yeah. plan on it. Did we cover everything we wanted to today? Uh, of course, we'll never be done. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, anything else you want to be sure we mention before we adjourn the recording? Um. Well. I'd love to say like how we ended up on this call because there was yeah. something you were doing and I was just like, George, I just need to tell you what, you know, you're, you're yeah. such a genius at teaching ah, and yeah. um, like you have such a way of just like pouring out to you. have just such a commitment. You can't even help yourself from yeah. just teaching, teaching, teaching. And I just wanted to encourage you to like, let that be what leads, you know, like mm. let that be the thing that you're bringing, you know, like I think you were, there was something I heard you say in one of these calls where I felt like you were questioning 
this online community thing. And I was like, let it be a teaching community. It doesn't have to be like a, some other format. Right. Uh, let it be yes. about your teaching genius. Uh, so I don't you. know. That was just, I just wanted to remind you of that, but that's what I see. And it's, I love it. I appreciate that very much. It's yeah. so helpful um, to, to be validated by peers that we respect. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's obvious it's like a leading strength for you because you can't help it. It just keeps pouring out the, the amount of content mm -hmm. that you give because you just so want life to be easier for people. Yeah. And I, I've definitely, I send my clients to some of what you're teaching because I just don't have the ability to appreciate, teach. I appreciate that. <laughs> Here, I, would say, says it. <laughs> I would say just to turn that around, I think um, it seems to me that one of your gifts is to recognize others' geniuses. Yes. I would say, <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what makes my work so fun is I just, I see, I see genius so easily or just like the magic in somebody and I can help them see it and help them bring that to the forefront of their, of their work or their life, you know, and, and just, you know, and often, and one of my early clients said to me, I'm realizing that the thing I thought was my worst trait is actually my superpower. And that is often the case. Mm. So that's, that's the thing we don't see that's often our best genius. Yeah. I think there's something wrong that we should be doing this. You know, I'm too quiet. I'm too whatever, yeah. too caring or, you know, bleeding heart or something. But like, let that lead and let it be a strength. And we're just going to be so much happier so yeah i could go on and on about that but we've already gone on really? too <laughs> yeah no this is perfect perfect well i will end the recording there and i'm i'll just encourage everyone to look at the links attached to this video to check out the workshop that you're doing on pricing and packaging yeah get a done day and the uh, and it's virtual workshop yes. and also the virtual mastermind group that you're going to yeah. Open yeah, the, the introvert soulpreneurs introvert soulpreneur. mastermind. Yeah, I'd love to hear from more folks. Yeah, Thank good. you, George. You're welcome. Such a pleasure.